Um, don't think we need 70. I think that's a little, maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's try 40. This is the number of actual flints, the number of particles inside of this particle system. Um, I think if we add a world velocity a little bit to the left, let's see how that goes. Okay, yeah, that, that, that might look a little bit better. So I think, you know, probably the best place would be to come from sort of the center of his body. That, that might be the best place to kind of spawn these, these effects from. Uh, Well, we definitely want to remove the block. We want to shift that away because then, then the player really knows that oh, there, there was a mistake. You know, I don't, I should not hit these blocks. So for now, let's just get rid of this kind of halo. So by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm double clicking there with my mouse pad when I delete something, and that, that shows the sub menu. Uh, on a PC, that would be the right click. So, 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 so. Okay, what we want to do is add this, make this a prefab. In the scene. See, I didn't know, actually know what to call this originally, so I just called line jump from. <laughs> Inspiring name. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it. it is what it says it is lines and you run and you jump them okay so a prefab is basically allows us to um, it's sort of like a, a blueprint or a, or a, a prefabricated object uh, short of that and it means prefab uh, basically you can you can load these these prefab objects into the game scene uh, whilst the game is running so for example if you want to automatically spawn like these blocks that I have here I've not coded these blocks individually as you can uh, as you can see these these blocks don't exist in the game scene they they get spawned randomly uh, from these prefabs and what what the what the engine does is basically drags these prefabs into the scene so that they get spawned and then they have the behavior that 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 we've coded for them um, I hope that explanation works well but if not just just go with it just go with it don't worry if, <laughs> if you're just starting out in, in game programming this it will make sense uh, especially with unity unity programming because it's, it's a great program um, Okay, so particles, we said fireworks red. I'm just gonna I'm gonna actually kinda call these sparks red just so that's a little bit clearer. Sparks red, okay. Now I'm just gonna check that this this actually gets deleted from the scene, the sparks red part. There you go. So yeah, it does. When it's finished, it gets deleted, which is what we want. Now what we want to do as well is once the character hits something. We basically want to instantiate or we want to create one of those sparks. So what we're going to do here is create a variable. And we're going to call this uh, particle sparks red. So it's the same one. Game object is a generic uh, object which is in the game scene, which is inside of the actual the game scene that you can see uh, when we're inside the editor. So whenever we hit something whenever we hit a square object, a floating wall, a tall square, or a wall gap, which is the name of the blocks that come along, we basically want to tell the main game that we hit a danger object, and we also want to instantiate one of these particles. So instantiate uh, particles red. Now we do want the position of that. Now to get the position, we need to create a, we need the transform information. Um, so what I'll do is actually do it this way. Transform dot position and transform, and then uh, the rotation doesn't matter because it's already going to face the camera. So Quartonian, I think that's how you spell it, but it doesn't matter. In fact, that doesn't matter anyway. So transform dot rotation. Okay. So in, so make the particles, make the red particles whenever we hit 
on trigger enter. Trigger is basically when something is like a collider, when it collides into something, this function will get called. This function will run its statements. So I think I think that's okay. So character. Okay, and you can see it's compiling down here on the bottom right. And we should see here. Uh, yeah, so what we need it needs to know that what what's the game object that it wants to instantiate, that we want it to instantiate, that we want it to create in the game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these line run jump objects, line jump run objects and sparks red and drag that in there. We have a second one as well, because the character is built up of a top half and a bottom half. Particle sparks red, boom, put that in there. Um, and let's just see how this goes. So I'm, I'm using my keyboard at the moment. Oh, that was kind of weird. So I just created a, a line, and I think that might be to do with the rotation. Yeah, I think that's pretty much to do with the rotation. Um, it's sort of like the sparks on in the camera here are going outwards like this, but what we're doing is because we're setting the rotation to the same rotation as the character, it's flattening it, so it just appears as a flat line. I thought that actually was kind of interesting. Um, a big inspiration for these games is actually Tron. I'm a big Tron fan. I love Tron. Tron, Tron, Tron. Um, but what we need to set here is... In fact, we're going to set it to, uh, I don't know how to spell Quartonium. <laughs> this is a problem, but it can be fixed. All I'm going to do is basically save this, uh, and I'm going to quit um, Mono Develop, and then what it will be able to do is uh, give me the the sort of int I think it's called IntelliSense where it types the word for you. It guesses what word you're typing, which is very very useful. It makes coding very quick. So let's just reopen this one then. Uh, to open scripts, you just double click on them inside of Unity. By the way, what did everyone think of um, Tron Legacy? Uh, the first I was so excited for Tron Legacy. Um, I'm I'm a big big fan. I'm, I'm I'm a kid of the '80s, and when I saw Tron, I was blown away. The original one from 1981 or '82, uh, and I was blown away. And when I saw the the trailer for Tron Legacy, uh, when was it? 2010, I think. I was I was so excited. When the movie came out, I wasn't really that impressed to be honest. Uh, but it's kind of grown on me these past few watches. I've seen it a few times, and I'm I'm actually warming up to it. So. There we go. So now you see quarter, quarter, quarternian, I've never known how to say that because I've never heard anyone else say it. I usually call it quarteronian. That's not how you say it. But anyway, it's that thing that starts with the Q. Uh, this should work now. It should allow the rotation to turn and then face the camera as if we, uh, just like we did before when we first created those spark objects. So let's click play. Done. There you go. So that works. Yeah, and you see that visually that's it's a little bit clearer, but Maybe that works, maybe that doesn't. Um, but that's all a part of the development process is we play around and find out what works best, what doesn't work best. Ideas that we originally had that thought were gonna work really well just don't work well at all. So it's really just about a bit of trial and error, but so long as the grand vision is there, it's, it's uh, you know, as long as you've got direction, then great, you know, and as long as you're sort of meeting Deadlines. If you've got deadlines in mind, then you know, play around all you want and, and find the best uh, things that look the best and also visually, uh, visually look great, but also uh, gameplay-wise, which is which is really the core of games. Gameplay, of course.
So that's much more what I focus on rather than the visuals, as you can clearly tell from, from this game. So, okay. I'm actually going to stop shooting here and I'm going to start another video in a moment. So I will come back to you soon, everyone. Bye.